welcome, Paul. Okay, Paul, you have seen these documents. What is your conclusion? Yes, I certainly have, Bill. Uh, this first one, I don't think you see it or not, but we have Frederick N. Pohl uh, at Al Alpha say, presently deceased victim. Mm -hmm. This little circle down here and this cross indicates they should delete this, and here's what was written above to change it and correct it. N-A-M, short for name, they left off the E, Frederick Peter Pohl. This handwriting was compared with known handwriting of Elvis Presley, and it matches very, very closely. All right, what about the one that says to Memphis? All right, this is the one that says to Memphis here, and uh, this is also references Frederick Peter Paul, mm -hmm. Elvis Presley, deceased, victim, and down here on the bottom, we see uh, 0 0.73 to Memphis, 8.15.78. I have compared this to known handwriting of Elvis Presley's and find that this also matches very, very favorably right. to the handwriting. Now, to what did you compare all of this writing? I had a great deal, great number of samples of his known handwriting. Number one, of course, was the Nixon letter, the letter that he wrote in 1970 to President Nixon. Mm -hmm. I had uh, several canceled checks written by Elvis Presley. I had a Christmas gift list. I had a letter to some other friends, a uh, restaurant check. Mm -hmm. that he had signed, and numerous other pieces. So, several documents. Several documents. Much, enough material, surely, to, to All compare. All authenticated is known handwriting. All right, now what about the issue that Elvis Presley signed his own death certificate? Well, that, let me hand this back to you, though. Okay. Number one, that's a misnomer. This is the death certificate. When we say Elvis Presley signed his own death certificate, it's not the death certificate, it is a medical examiner's report, as you can see. Yes. He didn't sign it. This was signed by the medical examiner down here. All right. But the name right on here, the street address, is 3764 Elvis Presley Boulevard. That, I believe, is in Elvis Presley's own handwriting. Also over here under Occupation Entertainment. They both match up very closely so to known handwriting. All of it Presley. was, in your professional opinion, Elvis Presley's handwriting? Yes, it was. Okay. Now, Paul's findings were corroborated by handwriting analyst Sheila Lowe. Now, Ms. Lowe is qualified by the California Supreme Court as an expert witness in document examination. We asked Ms. Lowe to compare 10 pages of questionable handwriting notations made in the estate of Elvis Presley inventory dated December 19, 1977, with a known verified sample of Elvis Presley's handwriting. Each document was viewed with transmitted light on a light table and examined under a microscope. Under penalty of perjury, Ms. Lowe issued the following opinion, and I quote, after careful examination of the documents, it is the opinion of the undersigned that the handwriting on all documents was executed by the same writer. Okay, Marty, you have seen all the evidence so far in your professional opinion, do you think that Elvis may have written on his own FBI files? Well, we only speculate that Elvis may be in a, a, a member or involved somehow in a government protection program of some type. Mm -hmm. But we know he was a DEA agent. And most probably, he was involved in working on his own investigation. At this point, I think that we should summarize what we've learned so far. It has been suggested that on August 16, 1977, in order to protect himself and his family from a criminal organization called the Fraternity, Elvis Presley arranged things to look as if he had died. He accomplished this with the help of the Department of Justice by somehow planting either a wax dummy or another body at Graceland. He also secured the cooperation of local officials in covering up both the autopsy results and the trail that might have led to finding out the truth. Then, deliberately misspelling his middle name, Elvis arranged for his coffin to be placed one space over from where he really planned to be interred. Elvis was relocated by the Witness Protection Program to a secret location and has maintained a low profile ever since. He has continued to be in contact with his family and closest friends and has made at least two phone calls that have been recorded. He has been seen and photographed several times and has made at least one trip to Europe According to the people who believe this theory, he may soon return to his public. How many of you now think there's a chance 
that Elvis Presley might still be alive. Would you raise your hands, please? That's an amazing percentage change. Now, I've been asked many times, uh, Bill, isn't this show exploiting Elvis's death? Yes, was my feeling. In fact, when I was first asked to host this program, I said no for exactly that reason. But then a body of evidence was presented to me that made the circumstances of August 16th, 1977 debatable. Uh, the more I considered what was in front of me, the more I felt that this was an opportunity to present to the world information which had never been brought to light. Now, the next question asked of me, if you're his friend and he is alive, aren't you jeopardizing that same life? Well, anybody interested in using the information presented in this program, information which has been available for at least four years, would have done so a long time ago. So if Elvis is alive, he's obviously well protected. Now, certain evidence seen here even suggests that Elvis himself may be reaching out. If anything can be said of this program, hopefully, is that we have left his life with dignity. And I thank you. Thank you, Luke.